uh, why don't we just go through a quick round of intros before we get started? So if Eric, if you want to kick us off, that'd be great. Yeah, so I'm Eric. I'm part of the Alva Labs uh, DeFi BD team, along with Nadeem here. Um, and, you know, we um, mostly focus on onboarding DeFi projects. But we just we work across most most apps um, and kind of like the tooling around it, right? So that's what, kind of where Hexagate fits into all this. Um, as for myself, I've been with Alva Labs about two years. Um, started off in September 2020, about a week before Mainnet launched. And then before that, I was I was in consulting for um, about four and a half years, mostly at uh, PwC. Glad to be here. Perfect. Nadim, if you want to go next, just a quick intro. Yeah, of course. Uh, hey, I'm Nadim, part of the same team as Eric at Ava Labs, where I'm primarily focused on DeFi. I've been at Ava Labs for a little bit less than two years, I think now. And that was pretty much my first job out of university. And she started out as an intern. Awesome. And I'd like to welcome our special guest, Neve from the Hexagate team. Neve, if you'd like to give us a quick intro, then we'll jump into it. Sure. So uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Neve, Neve Haskell. Uh, I'm the CEO and uh, co-founder of Hexagate, where our mission is to make uh, Web3 uh, easy to access and secure for everyone. As for me, I've been doing uh, security research uh, for more than a decade in different verticals, uh, so for banks, in the healthcare environments, in the Israeli army, and uh, now uh, focusing uh, with Hexagate uh, on the Web3 security. So uh, ha happy to be here, and uh, thanks for having me. Amazing. Well, well thank you all for the intros. Um, I think we're ready to get started here. So. Eric, I'll, I'll pass the, the mic to you as we get um, more sort of information about Hexagate and, and uh, let's, let's get things kicked off. Yeah, maybe we can start with a, um, a question to like set the stage here a little bit, Niv. So especially with the recent events or with FTX happening, um, I think the need for you know, self-custody of assets, right? And the need to educate people on how to do it properly, you know, becomes more and more important. I guess um, once... You know, as we onboard more people natively into Web3 and they're using MetaMask, right, instead of keeping their funds on, you know, centralized venues, um, what, what, should people, what should people be, like, thinking of or be aware of, in your, in your opinion, Niv? Awesome. Yeah, so, in, in, indeed, uh, very occasionally and, and also painfully, like, we're reminded of the benefits of and importance of self-custody, but uh, it's, it's not free, of course. So, self-custodying... Your assets means lot, lots of things where I think like primarily uh, security is top of mind in that case. So first and foremost, like I think the most critical, like, like maybe the first one uh, of among all, all the things that you have to take care of when self custodying your assets would be a proper key management solution. Like normally safeguarding like 24 words is a tough mission, especially when it safeguards valuable assets. I think you can compare it like to passwords, but in this case, Passwords, like in this case, like those 24 words, like guard much more uh, valuable assets, uh, your funds or other digital assets that you have that are valuable to you. And now the old trend of passwordless or MPC is like becoming a reality thanks to many great companies. And I think the next thing that we see like in, in the last years is all around the on-chain activity where Web3 is all about digital ownership and value transactions. So the next thing when self, after like take, uh, doing a, uh, having a proper key management solution would be to uh, uh, secure and monitor all your on-chain transactions where in Web3, like a single transaction can potentially drain uh, all your funds. Uh, and there are lots of risks and threats uh, when transacting uh, with smart contracts or with uh, like just uh, addresses and evidently like what we see uh, in just in the last year where we had like uh, around a couple of billions just stolen in, uh, due to fraud in Web3. This is absurd and clearly points out that security is a, is a huge missing piece uh, when transacting uh, on chain and this is exactly why we're building Hexagate and, and uh, in, in Hexagate this is uh, our focus where uh, on-chain activity, both pre-transaction and both post-transaction is our main focus. How to make it secure, uh, both pre-transaction and also how to keep it 
like those assets when they're out of custody uh, monitored. So we recently launched as a, uh, we recently launched on Avalanche to keep the all Avalanche ecosystem protected. So in this opportunity, I welcome everyone to go to hexagate.com, sign up, and you'll have like a nestle and a sec or browser extension that uh, safeguards uh, all your uh, Web3 transactions. Yeah, well, Sin, if, and the part where it's, um, you, you mentioned where, you know, if you enter the wrong address, right, you might, you might get your account wiped. I remember reading something on Twitter. It's like the equivalent of if you had like a Charles Schwab or a Fidelity account, right, and you enter in the wrong password when you're logging in and your whole account goes away. I think that's like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy to think about, but that's like kind of like the, um, what could happen in crypto, right? Um, so I think that's a good segue. Um, do you mind uh, just walking us through like, you know, how Hexagate works, um, what, I guess, first off, like, how, what the tool is, right? What kind of risks can it, um, can it help the users detect when they're um, doing transactions on chain? And then maybe diving a little bit into how the tool works on the back end, and then we can, uh, we can go from there. Sure, yeah, so <laughs> totally agree with what you said. Like, uh, you could just drain your wallet, like, in just, like, a, a very, like very easily, and this is why you need all those safeguards and, and tools to keep you protected, just like you have in other in, in traditional world as, as well, right? Uh, so going back to the, uh, like uh, addressing your questions around like the risk vectors that we're uh, dealing with. So I think that the way we view it, like we bucket this entire landscape or the risk landscape when you're transacting on Web3 into a couple of buckets where uh, we eventually, us as Hexagate, we uh, aim to solve all these uh, kind of uh, risk buckets. So I think if bucketing those risks into a couple of buckets, like before going on to the tool and what exactly we're solving, like the problem that we're solving is uh, around, again, risks and threats. So the first bucket that we are uh, addressing is all around like uh, phishing scam project and rag pulls where Eventually, users are lured due to social engineering techniques or whatever. They got a DM on Twitter, on Discord, or uh, just a mail uh, saying them to do something that they think they're doing, but eventually, uh, eventually they're they're not doing the thing that they thought they, they were uh, doing. For example, you get a link to uh, Uniswap airdrop, uh, where Uniswap is not doing an airdrop, and you're thinking you're into interacting with Uniswap, but eventually you are not. So that's one of the things is more like a social engineering kind of, uh, kind of uh, manipulation or uh, where you think you're working with the wrong, where uh, eventually you're working with the wrong thing. And this is normally very hard to, uh, very hard to uh, really assess uh, manually. Uh, so this is one of the key, uh, one of the, one of the biggest uh, buckets of risk like users normally today uh, encounter. I think the second one is, we call it like the counterparty risk. Like now the whole Web3 paradigm shifts to, obviously you have apps, uh, anything is coded. And because code is law and like code stores and protects money, uh, this is very lucrative for attackers to actually exploit uh, because it just immediately rewards you with a few millions of dollars where in a traditional world you had to attack an enterprise, uh, do a ransomware and then like negotiate with the enterprise. In here, it's so easy for attackers where uh, to just read the code and look for vulnerabilities and immediately get rewarded. So this is the counterparty risk. I think the third one is also something which is, which is becoming easier on Web3 is around market manipulation where you can buy an asset, just for an example, just as an example, just an, an NFT, uh, for for some price uh, that you think is the right price, but eventually this NFT got wash traded uh, because someone pumped the price uh, just by himself, and you had no idea or no clue, or someone is mimicking uh, another NFT uh, or another uh, originator, like someone is uh, faking a board ape. Uh, the, the board and NFT and you think you're buying the, the, the wrong one. So we think this is around like all the threats around like market manipulation. You also see it in DeFi where you have like price manipulation attacks happening uh, just I think a week, a, a day ago, 
happened uh, one attack and like a few weeks ago on the mar- mango market uh, price manipulation. So this, this bucket is around market manipulation. And lastly is like all around front end hacks. So uh, this is, we in, in August, we found in Curve Finance for, for one of our users, uh, we managed like he was about to transact in Curve Finance and Curve Finance got hacked and the front end got exploited. So the user had no clue uh, that this happened because it's going to the app he was always using, but eventually that app was working with the wrong contract. So us as Hexagate, as we protect all, all transactions, we were able to detect that front end hack and alert uh, the user. So all in all, this is like four buckets of risk. And uh, in Hexagate, uh, we're also we're uh, secure and in security that is king. So we are majority of the efforts is around data collection and detection algorithms. So we're collecting like we have uh, a few in changes indexed on our end. We have lots of detection algorithms that run on this uh, on, on every activity that runs on chain. So then when users transact, we know exactly what kind of threats uh, impose uh, uh, the, the, that transaction and immediately flag uh, before any risk or threat like harms, uh, harms the funds of the user. Just this, all in all, like uh, the different buckets of risks and like a bit how the backend looks like. Yeah, thanks for this answer. I think it's, it's a pretty good way to look at those different risks and kind of conceptualize them. But I feel like for many people, uh, we kind of know about those risks, but we don't necessarily know what to look out for or what kind of signs can tell us that, you know, those, those risks exist, what indicators should we look for. So can you, can you maybe tell us like for each bucket, like what can we look at, what can users look at to help them uh, kind of uh, evaluate how much risk there is for these different uh, buckets, I guess, and also how Hexagate fits into this and how to maybe also interpret the different outputs you get from the extension and how to understand those to actually me- uh, be able to make informed decisions when interacting with DeFi or any other protocols, really. Yeah, so th- that's a great question because it also relates to how we view the crypto in long term and, and, and adoption in crypto. Uh, so I think for crypto to be highly adopted, so those risks should be a non-issue. Like just as you had a computer and PC in the early days where uh, you had all, all those threats in the internet and you could just download the malware and you could record your, I don't know, credit card when you enter it in some e-commerce site back in when the internet was just starting. Uh, and right now, you know, like you have all those security measures that protect you without you ev- even knowing. So I think for crypto to be highly adopted, like all those tools and all those risks should be a no, uh, at some point, a no-brainer for users. This is how we view, uh, we view and how we try to uh, build our product when thinking of those risks. So all in all, like I mentioned, all those risks as something that we're doing, but eventually what we're trying to build is something that uh, does not require any specialty uh, and any like security understanding or anything like that, but rather protect the users from those uh, risky transactions. So all in all, like we're trying to protect our, our customers from phishing, front-end hacks, counterparty risks, scam projects, like market manipulation, when they're buying an NFT and not for the fair price, uh, or not uh, when it's not like the right NFT, like the authenticity of it. So we're trying to capture all of these together and eventually have the user uh, informed when they are transacting uh, with something uh, very risky, uh, eventually as something like uh, uh, that does not require him to go to uh, Snowtrace or uh, any other block explorer to understand what exactly happened, but rather like rely on Hexagate that we helped him, uh, that rely on Hexagate that if we uh, told him one thing, uh, he'd be uh, certain that uh, it, is, uh, it is what it is. So uh, all, all in all, like we uh, try to solve all of these together and eventually have the user informed with, with the final result. Of course, sometimes the reality is a bit more diff- difficult, especially for more uh, more sophisticated users of crypto. 
uh, and Web3 in general. So we also, in our tool, uh, give the users the ability to also understand, like, hey, if we say something is, is of a high risk, we give the enough, uh, enough but not too many data to understand what exactly happened. So if, for, just for an example, if you're going to curve finance, like the DeFi DEX that we found uh, uh, the front end hack in, we were able to tell the user, hey, this is your, like, this is high risk. Uh, and hey, this is your first interaction with something that was uh, just uh, uh, deployed uh, two weeks ago and you, and you handed over all of your ETH. Uh, so the user could, uh, seen that, like all the assets that were transferred, and also like the simplified English and uh, uh, and explanation to what happened in the transaction, and then he could uh, obviously uh, take a decision upon that. Uh, so that that's just in, in, in a couple of uh, sentences, like how we're trying to and explain every transaction that you are doing without you becoming uh, a low-level blockchain researcher uh, to understand uh, what exactly happened when you were, you were transacting. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. You really can't expect most users to have this like specialized knowledge and go on chain and look at Snow Trace, look at like 17 different sources to try and understand the risks. And I don't think the solution is to like drown them with different warnings, just like give them very easy to understand data is probably what will help the most. I think like one pretty cool feature is that that looks pretty simple, but I'm sure it's much more complicated. It's just how Hexagate kind of lets you simulate the transaction where you can actually see what your balance is going to be after this transaction, what tokens go out of your wallet and what tokens kind of stay in your wallet. And I think that's something that like is probably like, should have probably been part of the whole like web free ux for a very long time because it's it's pretty obvious once you have it but we haven't had anything like this for a long time uh can you maybe tell us more about like some other features that hexagate has uh of course yeah so for those unfamiliar with it so just uh, i'm not sure if you mentioned so the tool that we release is a browser extension that basically just or seamlessly plugs on top any wallets uh, connection that you have. It can be Core Wallet, uh, MetaMask, uh, Coinbase Wallet, or even Wallet Connect if you use a mobile. Like uh, recently, uh, Core Wallet as the mobile offering. So you can also ha still have access with that. Uh, so it seamlessly plugs on top of every wallet, and then it listens for uh, your Web3 transaction. And for each transaction, we take it uh, aside. We do the analysis. And then we return exactly what uh, what you what you mentioned. Around first and foremost is the balance change, like what assets were transferred in the transaction, uh, and that that tells you exactly what kind of uh, assets you were transferring or you thought you were transferring to make more informed decision. This is like the most basic kind of feature that we have, uh, and the more sophisticated uh, uh, checks that we do in our backend eventually is taking the transaction and in very short time, we're able to understand uh, all those risks that I've mentioned. Like you're buying an NFT, hey, is, has this NFT been wash traded? Like we're able to, do, to, to, to tell that in, in very, uh, even before the wallet pops up. Or if you're interacting with something we consider risky in our terms of risky, like you haven't interacted with it in, in the past, for example, or it's a, it's a front-end hack or anything like that. So we are able to tell all of these very, very fast. And this is due to our, uh, our indexing engine and, and detection uh, algorithms that we do uh, in our backend. Uh, so part of what we're trying to build, something that is uh, fast enough uh, before the wallet pops uh, in. And so you have all the info that you, uh, that you need uh, for each transaction or message signing that you are doing uh, on chain. Um, so th that's just like the, the, the main, uh, this is the tool that we have released for everyone to use. And again, like going to hexagate.com takes less than a minute to onboard the tool and use it. Uh, so, so that's that. Another cool feature I think that we have users for, uh, use it for various of use cases is the impersonate one. Uh, so once you install the extension, we give you an ability to not connect your wallet, but rather impersonate any wallet that you want, and then simulate transaction 
transactions using that wallet. So uh, many users use it just to test out some things or just to connect their wallet without really connecting their wallet. You, you click on the, if you click on the pop-up of the extension, you would see the impersonate and then you can input an address, for example, I don't know, Vitalik address or any other address that you want, even your, yourself. And once you do that for every, every uh, wallet connection, specifically through, uh, if you do wallet connect, Hexagate will uh, mimic the wallet, so you don't have to connect any wallet, and then all the transaction would happen on behalf of that address. So this is another feature that we uh, released as part of the release uh, the, on, the, on the launch of Avalanche, and many users use it even for uh, just connecting their wallet without just to impersonate their wallet to see their balance, without like if they're uh, uh, abroad or they're not uh, near their uh, uh, cold wallet, they can just input the address and, uh, in the impersonate feature, click connect wallet on the DAP and then they see all the balances uh, right on the UI without ever connecting to the wallet. Or sometimes you want to check a DAP uh, that you're suspecting uh, without, uh, without connecting your wallet. So you can safely do that with Hexagate when you impersonate the wallet to see that DAP. So, that's another feature that we have. Uh, and uh, of course, like as we progress, we add more features to the pre-transactions one, even the ones that users do not feel, like the speed of the, the simulation and the analysis uh, improves. We add much more uh, sources that we, uh, and, and detections that we, uh, uh, that we think are top of mind for users and so on and so forth. So also the detection engine uh, keeps progressing uh, even as we speak. Yeah, thanks for all that, Niv. Um, I think uh, Hexagate should really be like a core feature, right? For any um, kind of user-facing tool, like, like for example, in wallets, right? I feel like, you know, <laughs> MetaMask should just have this built in. I guess from your standpoint, like what's, what's preventing, uh, what has prevented you know, wallets today from adding this and, you know, is there like some, uh, is there other like technical difficulties around that? Like what's your view on, on, on that? So, so that's uh, an excellent question because uh, the extension is just, uh, is essentially powered by our uh, transaction analysis API. So us as Hexagate, like our, uh, one of the, uh, customers that we target is exactly that. Any service provider like wallets or self-custody solutions or even custodians uh, such as, uh, so just like MetaMask that you've mentioned, like a, a, a wallet, we welcome uh, all of these kind of, and even core wallet, of course, like uh, uh, we, we welcome all of uh, such uh, stakeholders to uh, just uh, talk with us, and we will, we'll, of course, uh, one of the things that, uh, again, we as Hexagate uh, uh, give is the API for that, uh, for that specifically, so that the extension is just like a mirror to that, so you can just uh, see exactly that, but we are uh, working with wallets to plug our API into those wallets, so it can be part of the crypto uh, UX or the transaction uh, flow inside the wallet itself. So we welcome, of course, and we work with and we welcome new wallets to work with us to blend in our API into their wallet uh, and uh, power and, and give their users much more confidence when they're transaction, transacting with uh, in, in Web3. Uh, and I think what, what was... So one of the challenging things for just a wallet to do it himself is that it, it, it takes a village for security. Like security is not like, uh, it's not easy. So as I mentioned earlier in the, in the call, so you have key management solutions and they should specialize in key management storage and all of that. And of course, like given access to Web3 and the on-chain activity is one hell of a challenge to secure because there are so many risks, and this is exactly why we founded Hexagate, uh, because the on-chain activity or the on-chain, like the transaction itself and everything happening on-chain 
is uh, something uh, that takes a village also to solve. Uh, and uh, this is what, what this is exactly what we are focusing on. Of course, it takes uh, it, it takes time to develop. It takes time to do it right, and also to uh, cover all those risks. So uh, exagate. So just rubbing it all up. Exagate uh, integrated into wallets is exactly uh, is exactly it's exactly the type of integration that we are. Uh, uh, working on as, as well besides the browser extension. Yeah, that's super helpful, and I think um, you know we've, we've been helping out with some of the some of the wallet conversations. So anything we can do to push there. But um, you mentioned that you mentioned um, on chain transactions a lot. I think um, you know in crypto, at least as far as the EVM is concerned, right? There's inherent um, degree of transparency when it comes to be able to tra track on chain transactions, right? Um, but in general, I think you know there's the uh, there's a bigger issue of being able to actually connect those on-chain transactions, you know, to off-chain events. And I, I think um, you know there's definitely like some security companies like I think Chainalysis does this really well, right? Where they they actually have a proper instance response team that works with you know projects on the ground. Um, they also track um, they also kind of match entity data, I believe, um, between you know different wallets and potentially different types of businesses, right? Um, have you guys like? Um, I'm sure that this is including some of the features in Hexagate already, but uh, what are you guys thinking in terms of like the off-chain components? So, so that that's uh, that's a very good point because eventually, if you look at the blockchain, it's just like a series of events that happen, and if you don't contextualize them with the like the kind of the off-chain knowledge that you have or that comes from outside. It just it, it can be meaningless sometimes uh, because it doesn't like everything happening on chain. It just like it doesn't mean anything unless you give it a meaning. So what we're doing in terms of off chain is uh, so we take all the on chain activity there is uh, across uh, several chains that we have indexed, and then the the whole detection engine eventually is is driven by the off chain uh, knowledge that we bring it they bring to it such as understanding what is an Oracle or what is a lending pool or what is a, a DAX and what is an NFT project and, and, and so on and so forth. And also alongside like with many other off-chain sources, more structures one like uh, phishing sources, anti-phishing sources that, that we use uh, and, many, and many others uh, that we also integrate into our detection, uh, our detection that data collection uh, engines. And eventually, this is what this what helps us to contextualize each transaction, and then uh, uh, inform you when you are transacting with something that we we uh, know the meaning of it. For example, if you use Hexagate on the Avalanche Bridge, uh, you, you would see that we know that you are now bridging funds uh, from, uh, for example, Ethereum to Avalanche because we know the bridge, <clears throat> and we and we keep an extra also. Maybe this relates to another, like the, the, the premium offering of ours or, or the next thing that we're going to launch soon around like monitoring, but I'll speak about it in a sec. So uh, for us, when you're interacting with something, we must bring the off-chain knowledge and off-chain sources in order to actually contextualize each transaction and tell you exactly what it is. So uh, we also, besides the on-chain uh, data collection that we have from several chains, we have lots of off-chain sources. Uh, it can be anything really uh, uh, that we are using, uh, even for prices, like historical prices that we take from the centralized exchange and then we aggregate them uh, together with cha chain link to understand prices and stuff like that to be absolutely sure that our pricing understanding is, uh, is uh, coherent and uh, we are not vulnerable to Oracle price attacks as, as an off-chain security vendor and stuff like that. Uh, so all in all, I think off-chain in here, like together with on-chain is the, obviously the only way to actually uh, solve all of these risks and to properly like treat the problem as, as it should. Yeah, I think in many cases, it's just not enough to just look at what's happening on-chain in a vacuum and just ignoring completely anything that's happening off-chain. You just need to get those data sources to provide this full picture. 
at least like in, in, in some cases, of course, sometimes it's enough to just look at what's happening on chain if it's like all of on chain infrastructure, but sometimes that's just not enough. Uh, so you, you kind of teased that uh, you were going to be releasing new features with maybe monitoring. Can you can you tell us more about what's next in your roadmap, what, what, what you're thinking of releasing, what features you're thinking about that could be added to the suite of analytics and security products that you currently have? Great. So uh, to, together, like this launch, uh, in, in this launch, like right now, like we're welcoming really everyone to go to hexagate.com and use uh, the extension uh, to, to protect all of their Web3 transactions. Uh, it's already open and everyone can just download and install it. Uh, as for the roadmap that we have, so you know, primarily like two things that I think uh, uh, Two, two, primar two, primarily two things. One is we're continuously responding to new threats and improving more and more our risk models and also like the performance of the, of the analysis itself. Uh, so users are expected, any, any uh, really extension users uh, is expected uh, to have like a, a boost on that front, like more security checks, much more performant. Also we have a, a we support more chains, but that's, that's for another maybe conversations. And and eventually, w one of the things that we've talked about is we have an, uh, our, our main uh, product in here is the API, really. So we offer for any Web3 app that initiate or receive transactions like wallet providers, custodies, uh, solutions, exchanges, uh, OMS providers, like anything, and any kind of provider can use that uh, exactly uh, and blend it in, into uh, into the product to protect any transaction. The second thing, which is a more of a premium uh, feature of ours or premium uh, uh, product of ours, is the continuous monitoring. So pre-transacting is one part of the security on-chain uh, for the on-chain activity. The second one is around uh, the post-transaction. Like you, assets are out, now out of custody. Uh, they're in a protocol or whatever. Uh, and now, uh, of course, as you protect every uh, pre-transaction, things can change even after you transacted. For example, you provided liquidity to a DEX. Uh, so even if the pre-transaction phase was completely legit, after like, that uh, decentralized exchange can now be, uh, for example, hacked or uh, or upgraded due to a hack or, or, or whatever. Like things can happen uh, when you transact on chain. And this is exactly the other piece that we're building, uh, which is the continuous monitoring. Uh, so we work with institutional customers, like service providers, as I mentioned, and Web3 app, and we help them continuously monitor and respond to threats that put their funds or their user funds at risk. So we're going to launch uh, soon uh, soon enough for a continuous monitoring uh, piece uh, that also covers like more threats that happen when the assets are, are out of custody, like obviously post-transaction. So you can follow us also on, on Twitter or send us a DM or an email through hexagate.com if you're interested to, to learn more and we'll happily like uh, t talk with you about it and see how the continuous monitoring piece can also benefit uh, benefit you. This applies like also for uh, like basically uh, as I mentioned like this, this end users and service providers uh, uh, all together. Yeah, that's really cool. I think this kind of post transaction security is really a, a crucial element to get to get real security on chain. In most cases, you're going to be locking up assets and smart contracts in some way, and they're still going to be exposed to some other risk. Some that might not be foreseeable at the time of the transaction. And I think like most people today, what they have to do is just be super active on Twitter, super active across socials, just keep an eye out actively trying to see if there's any flags, any exploits, but having this be automated would bring like so much peace of mind. I think that's, that's something that's probably very welcome here. Uh, so have you considered, by the way, incorporating more like social elements within the extension? Like, for, for example, like letting users flag specific things or voting on, on whether a website might be a scam and then this could be incorporated in some way. Or even like taking into account more subjective data or reports that are published by third parties such as security audits. 
Yeah, so, uh, so the answer is, uh, is a bit more, uh, like the answer is uh, overall yes, but uh, one, one important thing to know and, and how we view ourselves as a security vendor in this space is that we want to rely on anything that is also in, like an absolute tr truth. Like for us, the blockchain is an absolute truth. So we, we can count on it uh, on being like, anything that happened on the blockchain actually happened. Uh, what we would not do is because we are responsible for the, for, the, for the verdict of each transaction, we would not like rely on another vendor that we don't know uh, how is assessing uh, the risk. For example, to uh, inform users, uh, if, if we don't know the vendor, of course, to inform users, hey, this vendor uh, said that, so we're saying this is high risk as well, but you don't know that uh, in the back end, the vendor, uh, like our vendor said it. So for us, we're as a security vendor, we're trying to rely on anything that we can uh, absolutely count on and, and, and not use like sources that, uh, that, are, that might be even like hacked themselves. And then eventually we relay that into, uh, to our users. So they're, uh, they're relying on information that we did not validate. So we're definitely adding uh, uh, data from, from the outside. Like uh, auditing data is, is also something which is uh, evident. Like this is something that happened. Like we integrate with a couple of uh, auditing firms to, to get the reports. So we know that if, it, if we're working with uh, some contract, and then we see there is a drift bef uh, between the contract and the audit, you will be able to tell like, hey, this, this hasn't been uh, verified. Uh, this hasn't been verified. So, uh, 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 so, that, so that, that, that's something that we can say because then we know the audit actually happened. But if we use another, like one of the things that we wouldn't do is use another vendor that tells us, hey, this contract is not uh, secure. And then we relay it to our users, but because we don't know how someone else evaluated the contract from being not secure. So uh, around like, uh, uh, this is the type of thing that we will do. Around the community efforts is, is, is definitely something that we're uh, thinking about. Uh, of course, we, want, we don't want to let, uh, this can, such a feature can also be exploited if we're not like going over each and every report that the user sends us. Because then an attacker can, uh, 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 or, or someone can now fake those kind of reviews for uh, others. Uh, so this is the type of things that they're not entirely evident. So this is the type of thing that we're not, uh, uh, that we're considering, but we'll see exactly how we blend it into our product. Yeah, I can see why you wouldn't want to rely too much on this kind of subjective data and kind of be responsible for ensuring it's accurate where like you can really mostly run the analytics yourself on, on data you know is factual and that you can kind of accurately report without really worrying about uh, like any kind of accuracy or third party making any mistakes. Uh, yeah, so I guess for, for like the context of this space, uh, Hexagate it recently announced that it's launching support for Avalanche. Uh, and I think you're also running a promotional campaign with this. Can you maybe just tell us more about the process for onboarding into Hexagate, how users can sign up and start using the app? And I think for many users, they're probably not too used to like interacting with a, a separate security applications on top of having a wallet. So how, how does it work in combination with existing wallets that people are, are used to? Great. So basically we worked really hard to make the UX very, very simple. Uh, also both in terms of installation and, and also both in terms of when you transact, like what to expect. So installing the extension is like very, very easy and takes like less than a minute. So all you have to do is to go to hex.com, click get the extension. From there, all you have to do is to sign up with your email and the installation link would show up in your email uh, right away. Once you do that, you click on the installation email, you sign up, you uh, enter, you choose your password, you get the extension to install, you install it, and that's it. Like from that point on, all of your Web3 transactions are now uh, secured by Hexagate. And regarding how it works in terms of, uh, in terms of how it works uh, alongside the wallet, so uh, this is also something that we, uh, 
thought really hard for because we didn't want to be like something that uh, uh, just like uh, uh, pops out from nowhere or like interferes with your workflow or anything like that. So uh, the, the way it works is that once you install uh, Hexagate and and then you go to adapt like uh, uh, Trader Joe, Pangolin, wh whatever DAP, uh, Uniswap, like, uh, the extension is currently open for Avalanche and Ethereum. So both work, both will work. So once you connect your wallet, uh, we blend into the UX of the site. So you would have a small uh, hexagon uh, on the left or right. You can configure it in the extension settings, indicating that once you, configure, once you connect your wallet, you know we are there to protect the transactions. Now, once you issue a transaction, the minute it happens, we take the transaction, we do the analysis, and then we return immediately into the UX of the site, like not a separate, like not, not, not in a separate window or anything like that. Immediately in the site, like you have a, a slider that comes uh, inside. Uh, the wallet can pop up either through uh, uh, the mobile wallet if you connect it with Wallet Connect, or any extension wallet will pop up in a separate window. But in the site itself, like uh, you would have a slider coming in saying this is low, medium, or high risk. And then you would know whether to continue uh, with a transaction or not. Like uh, obviously uh, you can choose uh, regardless of what we're saying. It's obviously we're, we're not forcing anyone to do, uh, to not sign or, or sign. Uh, so all in all, it's the friendliest UX uh, there is uh, that uh, comes within the site uh, not interfering with your wallet, your wallet uh, keeps popping up, and from there you can just sign transactions with uh, confidence. We also have like, if you go to the tweet on Hexagate, uh, on the Hexagate profile, we have like a, a very short, like I think three, four seconds of, uh, of a video sh showcasing exactly that. Like what happens when you click swap on Uniswap and how we blend in uh, together with the wallet. So users can just see it. Uh, also in there and also the, in the hexagate.com, we have a screenshot of it. Yeah, I found the UX to be pretty nice. I do have a small pro tip here. Uh, at least it worked for me, but like you can go into the settings and get uh, hexagate to show up on the left and not the right. And I found this to be pretty nice because most wallet extensions are gonna pop out on the right. So if you get it to show up on the left, you can just see everything at the same time and there's nothing interfering because like like you said, it's not really a, a pop-up for hexagate. It just appears within the site. Exactly, uh, also in that, uh... That front is like in that opportunity as well. I welcome everyone to follow us on Twitter on um, Hexagate underscore uh, for obviously more updates and product launch and like new product launches. But as long as you have the extension, like we continuously update our risk analysis and models. So we, you would also have like frequent uh, updates of, of that as well. But the UX and everything would just stay the same. The backend is mainly what's changing. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So I think that's all the questions we have prepared, at least, Niv. Um, I know we're coming up with time a little bit. I want to open it up to the audience um, for now, if that's all right. Um, maybe for some questions on, on the community side, and then uh, we can wrap it up from there. Awesome. So if uh, anyone in the audience has a question, please use the mic button in the bottom left to request to speak. And, um, and we'll pull you up here on stage. Awesome. Well, as we're waiting for people to request up, um, I just have to say, you know, the the user experience, um, I could really see this being kind of part of an overall sort of strategy stack, right? When you think of like what technology a Web3 user uses, I think they can definitely slot in somewhere to really benefit those looking for kind of that improved and more secure experience um so as people go out into you know the the wild west of crypto they can be more equipped for the, some of these threats um 
and and be alerted that they might be interacting with a potentially uh you know dangerous dap or front end or whatever it might be um so let's see no questions as of yet um so i guess you know speak now or or um forever hold your peace um but yeah i guess for the the, the final do we have any kind of final sign off uh, words, uh, where can people sort of keep apprised of the, the various updates on, on both sides? Yeah, I guess um, for us, it's just, you know, the Avalanche, Avalanche Twitter. Um, we have, you know, various Telegram groups also set up. So all the important updates will kind of be relayed there. Um, and then, Niv, on your side, how, how can people get uh, get in touch with the team and get you know up to date with things going on? Uh, great. So uh, from our uh, from Hexagate uh, side, uh, I welcome everyone to follow us on Twitter for any any new uh, update or anything that comes from our end will be also uh, in Twitter. So I welcome everyone to uh, follow us on Twitter and send DMs for specific things. And the other thing that we uh, have already all like all, also open like also again for end user service providers like wallets uh, and other web three apps like uh, 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 even NFT marketplaces. Uh, I welcome you to go to hexagate.com. Uh, we have like a bunch of ways to contact us through there, uh, either to get the API access. Uh, get access to the docs, uh, get the extension, anything really. So hexagate.com should be also the the way to go to contact us uh, in a, any way. Fantastic. So we actually do have some straggler questions. Uh, so I'll start bringing them up now. Uh, we'll start with GitShow. GitShow, when you connect, feel free to ask your question. All right, GitShow, go ahead. Hello, thank you for this opportunity. I would like to ask about uh, the Higgs I get, you know, like they're building like uh, extension for uh, crypt for browser, right? Hello? Yeah, so, sorry, come again, please. Uh, so, so you are uh, building a extension for browser that will let, uh, you know, uh, Importing a new, importing a Web three network for for that, right? Yeah. So exactly that. We have a browser extension that you can install right now, and it will protect any transaction that goes into your wallet. Yeah. Like for your wallet yeah. design. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, you know also support new yeah. network? Or, just like a customized RPC and so on. This is my question. Thank you. Oh, sure. Uh, so we're currently, uh, like for the free tier, we're uh, supporting uh, Avalanche and Ethereum. Uh, we have also support for other chains as well. Uh, but for the other chains that we have, uh, uh, I, I, the, the way to get access to is to, to contact us and then we can uh, uh, speak on how we go into the access to the uh, other chains that we have but for the for everyone to use it's avalanche and ethereum and for every other chain that you want uh, we already have others that uh, are available uh, um, you'd have to contact us either through a dm on twitter or uh, uh, or through hexagate.com Awesome. Thank you, Gitshock. Um, Ken, we're going to bring you up here as a speaker. When you connect, feel free to ask your question. Go ahead, Ken. You can unmute and ask. Yeah, hey. Um... So my question is more like from the um, architecture flow or architecture diagram point of view. Um, 
uh, basically the flow is like if you're using a MetaMask or whatever wallet, um, a Brave wallet, to uh, and using the wallet to connect to connect it to your wallet, and how this flow like a two uh, hexagate. That's one question in terms of the data flow, right? Uh, that maybe the whole architecture diagram. Second is the support for some of mobile wallet, like uh, uh, lots of like trust wallet or or IM token. Do you support all wallet or uh, is there any um, uh, kind of specific wallet you just support? Uh, just two questions. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. So I'll start with the second one. So we support uh, uh, all wallets. Uh, so we're uh, kind of agnostic to the wallet that you're using. And for us, like if you connect any mobile wallet with Wallet Connect, we would safeguard this transaction. Like any any wallet that you use, like you can use anything. We'll just uh, we just support it out of the box. Also for the extension based kind of wallets, uh, we support right now every, like uh, uh, anything, uh, uh, any extension wallet uh, that at least our users use. Uh, it doesn't require like normally it doesn't require the uh, special uh, support. Of course, if there is a wallet that is not supported by us, but by any uh, any reason, it, sh it shouldn't be. But in any reason that uh, we can definitely address and, and add the support for us, it's uh, relatively easy. But right now, uh, MetaMask, Core Wallet, Coinbase Wallet, Rabbi, like and anything that you are using that is extension based, uh, Block Wallet, and all of these, or any mobile wallet, especially mobile wallets, uh, this is uh, uh, supported uh, out of the box. And for the first one, I just wanted to make sure I got it right. Like, uh, if you were, like, uh, we are working on top of the like the Wallet Connect. Uh, so if the question was uh, whether we are like uh, supporting Wallet Connect, so the answer is yes, uh, because we're like we're in a browser extension. We can uh, we so we support Wallet Connect, but I wasn't sure like it's completely. I understood the first question. Oh, yeah. The first question is more like uh, data flow. Like you, you can't like uh, as a proxy like between the wallet uh, to the uh, blockchain, like uh, whatever Ethereum or Avalanche. So mm -hmm. basically, once you connect with your extension, um, you serve as a proxy. You intercept the request. You anal analyze the request from the browser to see if there is any um, security vulnerabilities uh, in terms of smart contract invocation or maybe, mm -hmm. right? So then, uh, then you get a response or suggestions. Uh, so is this the, the flow that you have or is there something more to that? Yeah, there's nothing, nothing more than that really. Like the whole, uh, the whole magic, I'll, I'll say, is happening on the back end when we do the analysis. For the, uh, yeah, we're uh, just uh, taking the transaction, uh, analyzing it aside, like not interfering, not interfering in the flow uh, entirely. We just like uh, uh, exactly as you mentioned, and uh, and present you the analysis like right on the uh, on the web web app itself. Right. So, in terms of uh, kind of for uh, scanning, you scanning for some of rug smart contract. Uh, that's good, all right. And also, do you scanning for maybe a simple transaction scan for OFAC sanction list or something like uh, more than that, or, or what actually like are you scanning for in addition to the smart contract? Yeah, so uh, uh, we discussed earlier around like the different kind of risks that we cover. So, it's, uh, sorry, yeah, I was yeah, <laughs> like yeah, 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 yeah. But just uh, just as, uh, in a very short answer, uh, that would be uh, like we're we're essentially like there's the data points that we cover and uh, that we do, and also and, and the threats. So in terms of threats, like uh, we aim to uh, uncover like. Things like phishing, front-end hacks, 
market manipulation of tokens, uh, rug pulls, as you mentioned, uh, the, um, like the counterpart of risk, uh, essentially, if you're interacting with a contract that we think is not like uh, genuine or, or not mature enough, like, like uh, in terms of how we view uh, the risk, then we're flagging for it. So we have like, we have lots of lots of uh, data points that we eventually uh, they eventually collect and and, and analyze. Uh, you you mentioned a few of them, but but uh, all in all, eventually we're trying to cover uh, threat threat vectors, uh, as I mentioned, like those phishing, front end hacks, counterparty risks, uh, etc. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. The reason why I is um, we are currently writing a book on the web. One chapter is really about the web as a wallet. Maybe we are thinking potentially uh, to add whatever you have there. Uh, your chapter. Well, Sorry. yeah, you were a bit cut out. Sorry. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, so uh, yeah. we are writing a book on the web three security. Uh, within that book, there's one chapter on the uh, as a wallet security. Oh, so we're okay. talking about the MPC, MultiSig, uh, the HSM. Uh, we we also talk about the um, so for the end user. How do you protect yourself for the project? How do uh, using maybe third party custodian? So this mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh, I think uh, the Hexagate is also valuable um, solutions for wallet security. So we're thinking maybe. To mm -hmm. add uh, your content or reference your content in our uh, chapter, uh, in this particular uh, book is there we are writing. Well, that, that would be yeah. amazing, and uh, we'll love to. Uh, yeah, you, you can add mm -hmm. me, we can talk more. But uh, yeah, okay. uh, so the, uh, sure. if people are interested, we already have one book published by Wiley. Um, uh, it's called Blockchain and Web 3. Uh, there is a security um, section as well, um, but not wallet security. But uh, yeah, I think that's a valuable solution. Thanks. Thank you. All right, we are at time. Uh, apologies for those still waiting to ask their questions. If you want to learn more, uh, please click on the top uh, link here for the tweet. You can go there, follow Hexagate, follow the Avalanche channel. This has been another installment of the Avalanche Spaces with Hexagate. Um, we look forward to continuing the conversation and, and hosting many more of these in the future. So I, I wish everyone happy holidays and we'll see you soon. Thanks everyone. Thank you guys. Thanks everyone.